famed Seattle CEO, Dan Price. He was the dude who, I'm cutting my salary, I'm gonna pay everybody $70,000, we're all gonna live in a utopia, it's gonna be great. You know, a lot of virtue signaling going on. Well, he resigns from his company amid assault allegations. Oh, this is not good. It's a Seattle dude and lives over in Magnolia, just north and west of downtown Seattle. This is what we're talking about. Price was charged with misdemeanor assault in May after a woman alleged Price allegedly attempted to forcibly kiss her. He pled not guilty to the charges. This is not the first time this guy who is, he's just got the long hair. He, he's exactly what you would expect from a CEO here in Seattle that just kind of goes that direction. You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna take a quick peek at this King 5 article. We're also gonna take just, just a, a short little look at this guy's Wikipedia page, because Wikipedia is never wrong, right? I mean, this guy has some allegations that go way back. You've got some issues. There are, there are some issues. This guy has just recently stepped down to fight his court case, which is gonna take somewhere between two and three years. We're so backed up here in King County with our sexual assault units. Seattle police, I mean, they can only get to so much. King County can only get to so much because, you know, that whole defund the police. And we didn't defund the police in the King County, but we don't have enough King County officers to make it go. We don't have enough sheriffs and the assault unit don't have enough of them to go around. So that's why this is going to take forever. Seattle CEO Dan Price, who became famous for cutting his own salary to raise his employees' pay, resigned from his company, Gravity Payments, amid claims he assaulted a woman and drove recklessly with her in the car. All right, it's allegedly at this point, it's allegedly, but when you start to do a deep dive, you're like, oh, well, okay, allegedly he had more than one complaint, and allegedly his ex-wife had some complaints as well. We're going we're gonna to talk about that in a second. So Price pleaded not guilty to one charge of misdemeanor assault and one charge of reckless driving related to the incident in May. A harassment no contact order was also issued. Well, it's not that hard to get a no contact order. If somebody just says something and a judge is like, all right, let's do it. I mean, it's as simple as that. It doesn't take much to get a no contact order. In an email to employees that Price tweeted, he said his presence at the company had become a distraction and he was leaving to focus full time on fighting false allegations made against me. I don't know. I mean, the, the allegations against him seem pretty consistent, allegedly. They seem pretty consistent. I'm not going to judge the guy before he has his day in court because that is un-American. However, it's not a good look. These optics here for a CEO, oof, yeah, tough times. Chief Operating Officer of Gravity Payments, Tammy Cole, will, Kroll will take over as CEO of the company. All right. Well, so there's that. So the guy's just literally stepping down. Here is his resignation, what, email? Today I resigned as CEO of Gravity Payments, the company I founded 18 years ago. Tammy Kroll, our longtime chief uh, operating officer, has been named this company's new CEO. My number one priority is for our employees to work for the best company in the world. I also need to step aside from these duties to focus full time on fighting false accusations made against me. I'm not going anywhere. Well, you're going to court. You're going to go to court a bunch. And in the public opinion, you're kind of going down. So yeah, you are, you, are, you are going somewhere. It's just not where you wanted to go. According to the police report, a 26-year-old woman met with Price in January after they extend, exchanged messages on Instagram. All right, how old is this dude? Is he like 40-something? And he's do sliding into the DMs on 26-year-olds? Okay. All right. The woman told police that she met with Price after he told her he wanted to talk about professional matters in person. I need you to be at a bar at 10 p.m. and then we'll talk about professional matters you know, until one o'clock in the morning after, you know, 12, 13 drinks. I'm sure it'll be professional. The woman allegedly met with Price at a restaurant downtown on the night of January 20th. The woman told police Price got very drunk at the restaurant, according to documents. Well, uh, that's not a good precursor to professional matter discussion, is it? Getting very drunk. 
just just don't don't get you know it's the it's the epitome of the Christmas party the company Christmas party nothing good comes from having a bunch of alcohol served at a company Christmas party the woman attempted to order an Uber and Price suggested waiting in his Tesla until it arrived well I mean this guy's the CEO of a major company you're probably not going to just you know bail on him but she probably should have but you know you feel that pressure ah I would like a you know the job we discussed and I, I can see this going somewhere but I don't really want to sit in your car. Once inside his car, Price allegedly attempted to force a kiss on the woman and grabbed her throat when she pushed him away. Okay, mm, yeah. Granted, this is allegedly, let's be reasonable. Documents say the woman told police he became incredibly angry and his demeanor completely changed. Well, the guy's tanked. The guy's tanked, right? So that could happen, it happens very easily. Uh, according to documents, Price then drove the woman to a North Seattle parking lot and did donuts with his car before attempting to kiss her again. All right, so he is drunk, he's hitting on a 26-year-old, and he's doing donuts, and he tried to kiss her, and he, you know, it, it's just not looking good. Any one of these things, probably not good. The optics aren't good. Is he going to get busted for DUI? No. But these other allegations, he's going to spend a little time working this one out, right? Any which way, it's not a good look. The optics are not great. Price's attorney, Mark Middaw, called the allegations absolutely false after Price was initially charged, adding that they have evidence that contradicts details of the police report and raises serious doubts about the complainant's credibility. All right, that's what they always go after, right? You would you go after the credibility. It's a he said, she said situation, unless you got some video footage. But let's, you know, at this point in time, let's just take a little looky look at uh, this guy's Wikipedia page. So we've got arrests and alleged physical and sexual assaults. In 2013, Price entered an Irish pub in Seattle, sat at a table of people he did not know, and was asked to leave. After the bar's manager escorted him out, Price assaulted the manager. Price was arrested and charged. The charges were later dismissed. Uh, you're so drunk you sit down and talk with strangers? No, that's not a good thing. In October 2015, Price's ex-wife Christy Cohen recorded a TED Talk at the University of Kentucky in which she alleged that Price threw, punched, slapped, body slammed, and waterboarded her while they were married. Waterboarded her. Mm. Yeah, all right. Price's representatives notified the university they considered Colin's remarks to be defamatory. And then they ended up pulling that TED Talk. And that whole issue is just kind of out there. Palm Springs Police Department investigated Price for felony rape of a drugged victim. Charges related to an April 2021 incident at a Palm Springs hotel. On August 15, 2022, Palm Springs police told the New York Times that they had referred the case to local prosecutors. So he's he's running around and 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 then in February 2022, he's got these charges we're talking about now. This is a guy that everybody was like, "Oh yeah, oh, he's such a great guy. He's such a great guy. He's taking a pay cut and he's going to pay all of his people 70 grand." And then you got this kind of stuff going on. It's like, uh, you know what? You got some double talk here, don't you? You've got some double talk going on. So what's the dealio? I guess we're going to have to wait and find out. What do you want to bet? There is some kind of payment made, some kind of buy off of this young lady, a little bit of hush money, a little bit of Stormy Daniels money, maybe something like that. Hey, give you X, Y, Z if you keep quiet. Maybe it's too far for that now. Don't really know. But there will be a settlement of an undisclosed amount, guaranteed, right? All right, so here's a little bit of uh, video. Let's take a look at this. Seattle CEO Dan Price is currently facing allegations of sexual assault. He gained attention in 2015 when he announced he was taking a pay cut to give all of his employees a raise. He has hundreds of thousands of followers across different social media platforms. 
According to charging documents, Price met a 26-year-old woman at a restaurant downtown in January. The report said the woman attempted to order an Uber and Price suggested waiting in his Tesla until it arrived. That's where the report says he attempted to force a kiss and grabbed her throat when she pushed him away. Stone said it's not uncommon for a victim story to counter the public's perception. It's hard for us as a society to really hold two truths about somebody. So they're either, you know, great and the man or they're not. But it, it, what we know with sexual assault is that those two things often exist together. You know, someone can be a great person in many ways and still rape somebody or assault someone. She says this case at best will take two to three years to make its way through the courts. According to data from the center, 56 percent of sex offenses from 2015 to 2018 were assigned to a King County detective. Only 10 percent were filed in superior court. Price's attorneys tell King 5 that the allegations are false and that they have already received key details that contradict the police report. So, he, he, so, you know, again, you've got this whole he said, she said deal, but he's got a history of this, right? So you've got these virtue signaling, you know, CEOs that are just on the outside, just do-gooders. Hey, this is, this is what I believe in. This is the corporate philosophy we're doing, taking the pay cut. We're going to pay everybody exactly what they're worth. And, and we're hearing a lot about, you know, oh, the man isn't paying you enough. I'm not getting paid what I'm worth. There's a lot of that out there going on right now. And a lot of these younger kids are led to believe that they are worth way more than what they are. So that's that's where this guy kind of came in with, I'm going to pay everybody 70K. All right, were they worth 70K? Doesn't matter. It's what we're doing. It's just what we're going to pay them. Now you got this stuff going on. What is this case going to look like? It'll be super interesting, right? This is a national story because of this guy's history of, you know, how he presented his, uh, how he's going to pay his employees. So it's one of those things where, all right, here's what we're doing on the corporate level, but on the personal level, mm, yeah, a little Harvey Weinstein action, a little Jeffrey Epstein action, does it seem that way? I mean, waterboarding. I don't think you know, either one of those guys was even accused of waterboarding, were they? No, that's some hardcore stuff. All right, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that next time when this topic comes up, you'll be notified. Thanks again for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now.